What is up, you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. And today's review is definitely an interesting one. We're winding back to the year 2005 to take a look at the Mega Bloks Fantastic Four Collector's Edition Volume 2 set. Now, this only had 250 pieces, if you can believe that, but the figures here actually don't look terrible, in my opinion, and this probably retailed for somewhere in the $30 to $40 range back in 2005. I actually had no idea a set like this existed until I was doing some research recently and I thought, you know what, what the heck, I'll buy it and check it out for the channel. So that's what we're going to do today. Now the figures are definitely interesting. They're nothing like Lego figures and here we have Sue Storm. I do like that she's somewhat translucent, like she's, you know, mid-going invisible, but this looks nothing like Jessica Alba. And as we'll see here, the Mega Bloks figures of this era were almost like Lego minifigures, but at the same time, they had a little bit more shape to them, so seeing Sue built like somewhat like an actual human being is a little strange, especially when you put her up next to a Lego minifigure or something. It's just a little odd, but I can appreciate the detail and difference. Here we have Mr. Fantastic, which I unironically think looks a good bit like John Krasinski. You can see that he's super buff in the torso area with... Uh, kind of skinny legs there, makes it look like he skipped leg day, but, you know, like a Lego figure, he's poseable like that. Of course, the head is turnable as well. You can't really get the head off, though. Um, it just appears that it's on there as one piece. The arms don't really, like, pose forward, but you can bend them, and they're supposed to be stretchy arms, but if you look on the box, the arms on this figure look nothing like that, so maybe just a little bit of false advertising, but it's not a terrible figure. I feel like a lot of people want to say how bad Mega Bloks is. I do actually like this for what it's trying to be. Here we have the Thing, and Mega Bloks actually did two Thing figures, and they're basically the same. I think the only difference is the legs, really. But uh, you can see that, you know, you could twist his hands, his arms move up and down. I don't think that this is a terrible thing to integrate with your Lego figures if you have this. What do you guys think? Do you think this would translate well? I mean, here he is next to Spider-Man, like, just so you can see for size. I don't think it's terrible. What do you guys think? Here we've got the Human Torch. I really like that he's translucent, and he's probably one of the better figures of this set. It is crazy to me to think that Chris Evans was made as a Mega Bloks figure before he was made as a Lego figure, but regardless, it's still pretty cool, and again, nowhere near as bad as I feel like people try to say it is. And in my opinion, probably the best looking figure is Doctor Doom. I really, really like this figure. I think he looks pretty good, and... I don't know. I just think that he translates well from the movie. I don't think... Yeah, I guess you can take his head off. Can you? I don't know. I haven't tried. No, I guess you really can't take his head off. I really thought you could there. Oh, well. I guess I goofed on camera. But anyways, not too bad, and let's get into taking a look at the set now. Now, admittedly, it's been a while since I've seen this movie, so I don't remember if this is based off of anything too terribly specific. But, yeah, there's a big sticker up top here, which I guess is, you know, looking at some kind of science graph. I don't know if this is supposed to be, like, the vortex they went through to get their powers or something, but I did think it's interesting that you've got 1964, which was a year that the Fantastic Four was in publication. So, I, I don't know, maybe that's a little Easter egg or something. Tough to say, but you can open up this little vat here, and the box has the thing coming out of it, so I don't know if he's being tested on or something there. Um, there's some interesting pieces, like these pipe pieces. I really don't like when Mega Bloks does, like, individual big molded pieces, but sometimes it's interesting, but I, they don't really do anything for me here. The big play feature, I guess, is that Dr. Doom can bust into the lab, and here we go, I'm gonna push him through, boom, and all those blocks fall over. So, it's not a great play feature, and I guess Dr. Doom lost his legs <laughs> in the process there. But, you know, it is what it is. It's not a great feature, but I feel like this is something that LEGO would do even today. It doesn't feel super, like, outdated or anything. I don't know. Let's take a look at the other side, though. It's definitely better. So this side of the building is legitimately a lot better, and I honestly think that this alone would have been a pretty good set and would have helped keep the price down. But I guess since you had to get five figures, maybe the price needed to be high all along. 
Up top, I really like the Fantastic Four sticker there, so I put the Human Torch up there like he's patrolling around the rooftop. Moving down, we've got kind of like a little office area where I put Reed Richards. There's a chair there, there's a sticker with a little computer on it. Not too bad. One weird thing, though, is all of these floor pieces are, like, etched like they're wood, which is a little odd for, like, a high-tech science lab. We've got these gates here that can open up, and you can imprison Dr. Doom inside there. Again, think about it, guys. I really feel like this would translate pretty well into even a modern Lego set. What do you guys think? Anyways, moving down, I really like this pipe piece that runs between these two vats. Uh, I don't really know what they're supposed to be. I think it's just supposed to kind of look like a science lab. Little computer back there with some stickers on the back wall. Then we've got a computer piece here that kind of works on this. The back of the box says that it's a subatomic scanner. Basically, you can send a figure through there like they're being scanned, checking up on their powers or, you know, whatever. So, again, not a great set, but I do think it looks pretty good, you know, what, 17 years later. It's not the end of the world. So, let's zoom out and I'll give you my final thoughts on this whole set. All right, guys, well, drop a comment below and let me know what you think of this set. Do you think that this has aged really badly? Or for the year 2005, would you agree with me that this isn't too bad? Honestly, I think if LEGO had done a set like this or ever does a set like this someday, it would actually translate pretty well into LEGO. I see what Mega Bloks was going for here. I don't think it's terrible. And I think Mega Bloks gets a lot more hate than it deserves. But let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for checking out today's video. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. And while you're here, maybe check out one of my other videos.